Hello there, everybody. Good morning. Happy uh, Wednesday today, and we're taking a look here. Uh, study today is uh, 2 Kings, number 18. Um, we see right in the first couple verses, we see uh, Hezekiah begins to reign in Judah. And, and we're going to be talking about him over the next couple chapters here, um, 18, 19, 20. And it's, uh, uh, it, it's cool because we get to see now um, a king who actually honors the Lord. And, and not only does he honor the Lord, he even goes, he goes a little further than the kings before him. Um, who honored the Lord, and he actually takes down the high places. I mean, he goes all the way back to Moses and gets rid of the uh, 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 serpent uh, that they held up. So I'm going to read just a couple verses here to you, a little bit to you. Um, in verse 1, it tells us that it, uh, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was uh, 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned for 29 years. Verse 3, it says, And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. I'm going to read verse 4 for you. It says, He removed the high places and broke the sacred pillars, cut down the wooden image, and broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days the children of Israel burned incense to it and called it Nahashtan. And, you know, he really honored the Lord here. And he really just got rid of those things in his house that were not in order. He really, you know, this is a man who is a leader. This is a leader right here. You know, he knows what is right. He knows what is wrong. And, and he sticks to what is right. And he gets away from what is wrong. He actually destroyed what is wrong. And, and you know, I, I mean, you know, when, you, when, when this happens, you know, when you begin to get your house in order, when you begin to live right, and you begin, people begin following you and and living right behind you you know those those that you have influence over begin to change and begin to honor the lord more what happens well, the devil comes in the, the the enemy comes in and he tries to steal kill and destroy and we see that going on here in verse 17 it says the king of assyria sent some people the king of assyria came at jerusalem the king of assyria came to attack you see the enemy is attacking here and listen listen this is one of um um hezekiah's men speaking back to the men of the king of assyria and he is is uh, giving a speech to the people of jerusalem and he's saying this is what the king has said has any of the gods of the nations at all delivered its land from the hand of the king of Syria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvim and Hannah and Iva? Indeed, have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their countries from my hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand? You hear the words of what's spoken here is, is arrogance of the enemy saying, Look, hasn't stopped me yet. All these other gods haven't stopped me. What are you going to do about it? What do you, what do you think your God's going to do? Here's a history. Here is a history of other gods not stopping me. Do you really think your God can? That is what they're saying. And, yet, you know, when we come up against these, these attacks from the enemy, he wants to take away our hope. This is exactly what he's done, is he's trying to take away the hope of the people, saying, no, 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 no. Forget the Lord. He's not going to do it. He can't do it. Nobody can stop me. And hope is one of one of the, the, the pillars of Christianity. You see, we need to have hope in our lives. We need to have hope that, that Jesus is who he says he is, that he will do what he says he will do. We need to have hope that our Father holds the key to eternity for us and that eternal life is found in the blood of Christ. We need to hold hope that, you know what, Things may not look so good now, but they're not always going to be like this. Tomorrow is a new day. The Bible says that God's mercies renew daily. Tomorrow is a new day. Have hope for tomorrow. What has happened yesterday is gone. It's in the past. Live for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Have hope. You see, Hezekiah has hope in the Lord. And we'll see over the next couple chapters exactly what happens here. But our message for today is follow the Lord. And I'm going to finish reading verses uh, 5 to 9, 5 to 8. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor who were before him. 
For he held fast to the Lord and did not depart from following him, but he kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord was with him. He prospered wherever he went. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and did not serve him. He subdued the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory from, from watchtower to fortified city. That is something you want said about your life. And have hope when the enemy comes. The Lord is with you. Have a super day, guys. I love you all.